Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about some of the stupid purchases that I made in my 20s. There were a lot of them. I spent way more money on silly things that I didn't really need and I sort of wanted to own up to some of those things that I probably could have done without. So I'm going to talk through five stupid purchases that I made in my 20s, starting with really expensive designer shoes. I think you guys will probably know by now that a huge crutch of mine is shoes. I love investing in shoes, I love getting good quality shoes. I have a bunion on my left foot which I've had since I was 13 and so because of that I like to spend a little bit more and get something that's really good quality that I know is going to wear really well and that isn't going to put too much pressure on it because that's something I'm very conscious of. But it did at certain points throughout my 20s get really quite out of hand and I want to single out a few pairs of shoes that I sort of wish that I had never bought. So the first pair I want to talk about are the Chloe Susanna studded boots. These are sort of like a cult iconic pair of boots and I saw them online and I thought I need to have those. Those need to be part of my perfect wardrobe. I'm going to wear them all the time. However, in reality, they weren't my style and I was really just chasing after another trend that I'd seen on about a million different blogs and so many other people's Instagram feeds. I got them, I think I wore them less than 10 times and I ended up selling them and actually maybe the second time I wore them, I ended up scuffing the toe. So really it was just a nightmare. Yeah, they were a little bit more high maintenance than I had anticipated and they just did not work with my wardrobe and those boots are damn expensive and I bought mine second hand as well so yeah those were really expensive. The second pair that I wanted to single out were a pair of platform Prada heels. I saw Rumi Neely of Fashion Toast wear these shoes and I thought I needed to have them. They looked perfect and I really wanted to emulate her style. She was someone who I quite looked up to in my early 20s and I will link my style evolution video up here because I think they'll give you a lot of insight into how I used to dress, particularly when I was, you know, 21, 22, 23. So I bought these ridiculous expensive shoes I really want to say they definitely cost me over a thousand dollars I maybe wore them twice they were so tall that I could barely walk on them they were not practical at all and really I was just chasing the hype of these shoes that had been created by someone else and the next pair of shoes I can't remember who I would have seen them on, maybe it was Jane Aldridge of uh, Sea of Shoes, but they were these um, blush patent Miu Miu loafer heels. I bought these, I think I managed to track them down on Blue Fly or somewhere like that, and I bought them, and they were really beautiful, and I did wear them a little bit, however, the heel actually snapped right off them. I had to go and get them repaired, they were never the same after that, and those shoes, I want to say, probably set me back around the $800 mark, again, very expensive for a pair of shoes. And the final pair of shoes that I want to mention, which I think are going to be a little bit controversial because I know so many people love these shoes and they are absolutely gorgeous and I do think that they are worth spending money on, but in my experience they weren't and it's the Valentino Rockstar shoes. Now I've actually bought these in two different styles. I had the 10 centimeter heel, which I bought when I was living in Wellington and these were in the black patent and I wore those maybe two or three times before realizing they were A, too tall for me, B, going to wear at the toe really badly really quickly. Then the second pair I bought were the kitten heel and these are in the most gorgeous kind of plummy color and I bought them when I was working at David Jones so I got a little bit of a discount but they were still really expensive. They were still over a thousand dollars. I think I kind of bought them with the idea in the back of my head that maybe one day when Luke and I got married I'd wear those shoes. However, they were so expensive, I didn't want to ruin them, I hardly ever wore them and when I did, I think I stashed them under my desk at work and I just wear them around the office. The other thing I found with those shoes is that doing up the buckles was a major faff. It took quite a lot of time and what I had heard from the sales assistant is that there could be some faults with the buckles, so you had to be quite careful and quite delicate with them. So I ended up leaving them in the box, I never wore them, they were gorgeous but just really not right for me. So one of the things that I think I really learned from that is that it's really not worth it for me to spend quite that much money on shoes and instead what I've been doing is I've been buying any designer shoes that I've been kind of lusting after from the real, real second hand or I've been looking for them on eBay because it's just not worth it for me to spend over a thousand dollars on shoes because I probably won't wear them, I'll be too precious with them, I won't want to ruin them and I mean the shoes, they go on your feet, they touch the ground, they're going to get a little bit ruined so yeah, not going to be spending quite that much money on shoes in the future I don't think.
The second shopping mistake that I made has to be a uni class that I stopped going to. So in my second year of university, I was kind of at odds as to how I wanted to do my degree. I originally went into university with the idea that I was going to come out with a BA majoring in political science and a BCA majoring in economics and accounting. Now that is a lot and I really did focus on the financial aspect of that degree in my first year and in my second year I did a lot more politics and international relations based papers which I found that I had a lot more passion for. And while I was doing this 200 level economics paper, I also got a promotion at work and I became a bar manager at the bar that I was working at. And this also meant that I had increased hours. So I was working somewhere between 40 and 50 hours a week, depending on how late I had to work. The hours also ended up clashing with my class. And in the end, I just found it too much to kind of try and teach myself all of the teachings from each class that I had missed in my free time. And I ended ended up not going to the exam, I don't think, and I got a K grade for that paper, which means that you didn't meet the requirements to pass the class. So in hindsight, I really wish that I'd been able to cut the class completely because I would have preferred not to have that K grade on my transcript, obviously. In hindsight, I really should have prioritized my studies over this job that I had because really the job I had was just fueling my purchases at Karen Walker, which were things that I didn't need. And while I enjoyed working in the bar, I think my education was much more important. The third stupid purchase that I made in my 20s was this beige microfiber L-shaped couch that Luke and I got when we first moved in together. I don't know what I was thinking about getting a beige couch, and not only a beige couch, but a microfiber couch, because those things, when you drop something on them, it can be really, really difficult to get the stains out of. We learned this very, very quickly, and particularly with having a couch he actually clawed at the microfiber and ended up damaging parts of it and I also just could not stand the L shape because there's so much dead space in the corner and I know that Luke loved lying on the couch but I personally hated that couch so much and I regretted it the instant that we ended up having it in our flat. We actually only ended up living in that flat for one year because after that we decided to move in with my parents so that we could save up money to move to Australia. So we ended up having to sell it in the end anyway and since we've been here in Sydney we've ended up buying couches which have removable fabric covers because if you spill something on them you can pop it in the washing machine clean it up and it's gone. It looks just like new. So I would never ever buy a microfiber couch again. I just completely regretted it. And also the same with the L-shaped couch. Just way too much dead space. And while I do think they can look really cool, I just hate the idea of having that awkward corner space when you're entertaining people, which is something that I do like to do on occasion. The fourth shopping mistake that I made was a camera that I purchased. So while we were still living in Wellington, I decided that I wanted to upgrade my Canon camera. I think I had a Canon 350D that might have, or 550D maybe, was my first camera, first proper DSLR camera. And after a while, I decided I wanted to go for something that was a bit more high quality and something that was full frame. I did not do my research at all. I really didn't. And I just sort of looked into what camera looked a little bit better. And I ended up settling on the Canon 60D camera, which has a flip out screen, which at the time I thought it would be really good. And actually, when I did start YouTube, I was using that camera to film on and it was handy to have the flip out screen, but now I use my laptop. So it's kind of become a bit redundant, but it was not a full frame camera, which was what I wanted. So I really just didn't research it properly. The sales associate in the store clearly didn't understand what it was that I was after before, either that or I didn't communicate it properly. Probably my own fault because I was so set on getting the 60D camera and I thought it was a real upgrade on the one that I already owned. As it turned out, it really wasn't. It was only a slight upgrade. It was essentially a very similar camera with some upgraded modifications. It was not the camera that I wanted to buy. And a couple years later when we moved to Sydney, I ended up investing in the Canon 5D Mark III, which I'm filming on right now. And that is the kind of quality camera and caliber camera that I was looking for. So now I make sure that I research everything to a T. I read tons of reviews and I make sure that I know what it is that I'm buying before I go and purchase it. And it's definitely been the key to making sure 
sure that I don't make any more silly mistakes like that. The final shopping mistake that I have made in my 20s has been to shop emotionally. I know I'm not the only person who does this and I've mentioned it so many times but it's definitely been the reason why at some points in my life I have shopped a lot more than I needed to or I've bought things that I just did not need. I will find something to distract myself the time that I thought I was going to do loom weaving and I spent all this money on all of the things that I thought I would do for that just because I was a little bit stressed out. In reality, doing that is really difficult and I found that out pretty quickly and I wasn't happy with what I was making and in the end it was really not something that I ended up pursuing or continuing. Same can be said with quite a few of the things that I've added to my wardrobe. I've bought them in moments of stress or when I've been feeling really anxious or upset and while they have been beautiful items, they've just been things that I don't need, that I didn't need to spend money on and I really, when I look back at it in hindsight, I could have put that money towards my savings or put it towards going out for a nice meal or something something like that. So my goal for my 30s is to really think through my purchases a lot more and shop a lot less emotionally. I know it's still going to happen every now and then, we're not perfect, but I think the key is to be really conscious of when you are making those really stressed out emotional shopping decisions and stop yourself before you press the checkout button. So those were five of the big shopping mistakes that I made in my 20s and looking back there are definitely a lot of learnings that I know that I have applied and will continue to apply to purchases that I make in the future. I'd love to know the comments below if you guys have made any purchasing decisions or shopping mistakes that you kind of look back and go if I could do my time over I'd definitely do it differently so please let me know if you did like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more fashion and beauty and kind of lifestyle videos from me I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video see you soon bye